What is up guys and welcome back to the channel. Coach Will here from Iron Will Tennis. As always, I hope you guys are working hard and doing well. Today we're going to be doing a couple of exercises that are going to help us really improve the action and accuracy of our slice serve. When we hit a slice serve, for those of us who are right-handed, essentially what we want to see is a ball that moves from the right side and curves to the left. And the level at which we're able to do that is going to be dependent on how much action we're able to get going around the ball combined with how much pace is pushing the ball forward. So the exercises we're going to go through today are going to essentially help us learn to measure out and also be able to anticipate how much our ball's curving, making it easier to direct. The drills we do today are going to be really easy to set up. It doesn't take a lot of equipment. And then from there, you guys can practice these and it'll be really easy to measure how much your serve is improving based off of running these few exercises. So in our first exercise, we're going to be taking a broomstick or any type of pole that we can use to weave in between the net and we're going to be placing it on the doubles line just inside. And what that's going to do is that's going to be used as our obstacle to set up our first exercise. All right, so as you can see, I have my pole, which I weave through the net, and it's about one foot width from the singles line. That's really important in terms of how we are going to be measuring this out. Now, once we've gotten this set up, we're going to put ourselves basically right in front of it along the double side line, but we're gonna be putting ourselves all the way on the baseline. So the way this first exercise goes is, we're gonna situate ourselves, as I said, right about in front of the pole that we have placed down on the net, and we're going to use the two matching locations as our basis of comparison. When you hit a slice serve, as we said, the ball should be curving from right to left. I'm gonna use a slice serve, and it doesn't necessarily have to stay inside the distance of the service line, but my goal is to serve outside the pole and bring the ball back into the alley over and over again. Now, you can, do, you can accomplish that a bunch of different ways. You can toss it a little bit out to the side, but again, we are still measuring our standing location, and we're still measuring it based off of this pole. Now, as we proceed to keep practicing this, our goal is going to be over time, it doesn't have to be all in one day, our goal is going to be to accomplish two things. Thing number one is going to be to get the ball to land further and further inside the alley. Thing number two is going to be, once we get really confident on the action that we're able to have, we're going to start trying to back ourselves further and further away from the doubles line and still manage to bring the ball around that pole and bring it in. Like that's a bad serve, but then we go in and we're able to really make that action come back around. It takes a bit of practice to start really understanding it, but that's gonna be the first way that we can A, improve understanding how our ball is supposed to move, but B, it's gonna be helping us to figure out exactly how much improvement we're having with the serve because we can very definedly, I don't think definedly is a word, but in a very defined way, we're able to measure how much our ball's curving as well as what our starting locations are. And once you've gotten through this a couple of times, and again, it's not gonna all happen in one day, the next goal is gonna be to hit that same action, but be able to keep the ball inside the distance of the service line, which that one was. It went around the pole, but it came back inside the distance of the service line. So that's gonna be it for drill number one. Very easy to set up. All you need is a stick or a pole or a broom or something like that. Anything that can weave in between the, the ropes on the net, and that's easy to set up, and you should be able to knock that out and that's, a good, that's also a good way to just warm up hitting slice serves where you can actually give yourself focus, not just hit serves. Okay, so for the next part of the exercise, this one is gonna require you to have a obstacle that is already pre-established. So for me, I'm gonna use the curtain that divides the two courts. So if you have a wall or a fence, you can do it exactly the same way. This is gonna be more about understanding how your body is supposed to move through the serve. A lot of people make a mistake of when they hit slice serves really staying linear on the action. You wanna get a good amount of body rotation. Now what we're doing here is gonna be very extreme. This is not how you're supposed to serve, but this is a good way to really get the activation from the lower body, from the shoulder rotation and such. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna actually try to hit a slice serve that hits the curtain that divides the courts, but my ball has to get there without bouncing. So we're focusing only on reaching around the ball, not on accuracy of getting it into the box first. So as I said, we started with the first exercise of being able to understand how our ball is supposed to curve. Now we're gonna go with the most extreme variation of it and just get our ball really rotating 
around and trying to really find the action rotating through. Now where a lot of people will make a mistake if they do this one is they're gonna start trying to just hit the ball this way. So what I try to do is I try to make sure that my ball clears something that I can see in front of me as it goes that way. So I say that the ball has to travel through the service box and then go that way. I'm not just aiming to the side. So if you look at the serve again, you'll see the ball goes through the service box area and then ends up over there. I'm not just hitting to my left. Now, if you wanna push this a little bit further, one thing that I have people do that really have trouble understanding the rotation is I tell them they actually have to turn all the way until they're facing the curtain again. So for me, the curtain's behind the camera. I'm gonna hit this same slice serve, but I'm gonna rotate my body until everything goes all the way back to where I started. It's not the most comfortable thing to do, but it helps you start feeling the concept of not stopping your rotation as you strike the ball. You want your body to really come around through this motion. And then you dial it back and you start working on just getting the action with the appropriate amount of body rotation. But I always believe in learning in extremes and then learning to dial it back. It's very difficult to incrementally increase up to the level of success. Most people learn better by bouncing back and forth between extreme success and failure and kind of bouncing back and forth until they find the middle, which is perfect, rather than trying to like inch their way towards what the perfect thing is. So that's drill number two. Again, very easy, requires no setup. Let's get right into drill number three, which is gonna combine the concept of both, and it's also gonna help us start working on the accuracy within the drill itself. All right, so for our last exercise, we are gonna actually be getting the serves into the box now, and we're gonna be focusing on the path the ball takes after bouncing. So you first need to make sure that you can actually hit a slice serve somewhat accurately. It doesn't take long to develop accuracy on it, but remember we're trying to anticipate the curve the ball is gonna take through the air. So we can also anticipate where it's gonna land and what it's gonna do after it lands. So what I have set up on the back here is three lanes. I'm gonna give you guys a close up on it, but essentially what we're gonna be doing with this exercise is we're gonna be hitting an out wide serve but we're, when we're hitting it, we're gonna be trying to get the ball to curve specifically with either between lanes or outside of lanes that we've laid out. So I have cones that are lined up in green, yellow, and, and blue. And as I'm hitting my serve, all I'm gonna be telling myself either out loud or in my head is I wanna keep my ball in the blue lane. I wanna keep my ball in the yellow lane. I wanna keep my ball in the green lane. And as we're practicing it, you're gonna start trying to, again, anticipate and control what angle your ball is taking, even though you're essentially hitting the same target each time. And the way we're gonna do that is by balancing out how much pace we put through the slice serve versus how much spin we put through the slice serve. And in order to really understand this, you have to kind of do a little bit of math. Obviously nobody's doing mathematics in their head when they serve, but what you have to understand is the more pace you have on a slice serve, the more rotation you're gonna to have to have to achieve the exact same goal. So if I'm hitting a ball, I'm gonna spitball numbers here, but if I'm hitting a ball at 10 miles an hour, let's say I'm hitting a ball 10 miles an hour, and it takes 10 RPM, again, these numbers are not accurate, but I hit the ball 10 miles an hour and it takes the ball, it takes 10 RPM to make it bend a little. If I hit the ball 20 miles per hour, I would have to then assume it would take 20 RPM to get the same result because they're always fighting each other. So the more action that you put, the more you'll get the degrees of the ball to bend or the path of the ball to bend, the more rotation you have with more power, you don't exactly get that same result. Your ball's gonna still be following the same curve because they're always fighting each other. The more you hit forward, the more the ball wants to go forward. The more you hit around, the more the ball wants to go around. So they're constantly just battling on which one takes more of the result. So with this little exercise here, what we're doing is controlling the amount of action versus the amount of pace that we put through the serve by controlling the path the ball has to take after the bounce, not necessarily the path the ball is going to land when we're serving. We're hitting the same out wide serve each time, but we're trying to control exactly what degree the ball bends for each time. So now I'm going to give you guys a close up on the actual targets while I do the exercise. Okay guys, so like I said, here's your close up on it. I have these three cones right next to each other because as we said, the serve is going to need to be outside of these cones regardless of what my target is. My goal from there is to then say, all right, when I hit, my, when I hit this slice serve, I'm gonna have a softer slice, so I want my ball to only really go 
outside the line that is the green cones. Then if I'm hitting a, a serve with a little bit more action on it, I would say, all right, this time when I hit my slice, again, still landing in the same general area, I want my ball to stay outside the yellow cones. And then if I wanted to add a lot of action to it, same target, but adding more rotation to it, I'm gonna see if I can get my slice serve to land, same spot, but stay outside the blue cones. Now that you've seen the concept of it, I'm gonna break us back over to the serving side, and I'm just gonna be calling my path that I'm aiming for, and you're gonna see if I can basically stick to what I'm saying. All my targeting is the same as far as through the air, and to the ground here, because all these serves are technically out wide serves in terms of landing position. But depending on the action that I put on it, you're gonna see a different way that the ball affects my opponent when it gets to the baseline. And it would have essentially had them needing to not be able to predict where they're going to be standing based off the landing position, but based off of the action that I'm putting on it, which gives you more opportunity to be effective against your opponent because you're having them guessing that much longer. They can see that it's a slice, but now they have to kind of wait to see how much action the ball actually has, which puts them a little bit slower, allows you to be more in control of the point from off of your serve because now the person is just a tad bit behind the eight ball based off of you just having a little more variety in your serve. All right, so back on this side of the net, going for my out wide targets, but again, trying to predict or control the path my ball is gonna take based off of the amount of action. So I'm gonna start off by going pretty basic. I'm just gonna see if I can get my ball to stay outside the green, which is the most shallow angle that we had. So hitting a slice serve with a little bit more drive through it, I managed to get the ball outside the green, but not outside the yellow. If I add a little more action to it, I'm gonna I'm going call them trying to go outside the yellow this time. Oh, I knocked the cone down, that's not it. There we go. That ball stayed outside the yellow, but it didn't break the blue. So now I'll just add a little bit more action to it. Again, this is the sharpest of the angles, but my goal is to now get a ball that again lands out wide, but goes even further and stays outside the blue angle. Well, I succeeded, but I don't think it landed in the court. There we go. And it's that simple. I just knocked out that drill with four balls. And all you would do is just, again, add and take away action so that you start being able to predict the path your ball is gonna take. It doesn't happen overnight, but some of you might be able to knock this out first try. Other people, it might take them a few weeks to be able to move it from the green to the yellow, from the yellow to the blue. It's all based on your own skill level and how much time you're gonna put into developing the skill. But this is a very easy and measurable way to improve your slice serve over time or just be able to see if there is any improvement that can be made. If you're hitting this sharp angle, you might actually be the type of person that has trouble hitting a softer angle on the slice. Your ball is always curving super hard. It goes both ways. So with this little exercise or these little series of exercises, it's very easy to practice getting the action under control, getting the action predictable, which in turn is gonna make you able to control and dictate with your serve more often. That's gonna wrap up this video. As always, guys, like, share, and subscribe because I hope the channel continues to grow as we go through more and more technical things and more and more match play analysis and things like that. A lot of people that I've shown these videos to have been benefiting from it. So that's gonna wrap up today. As always, guys, my name's Will from Iron Will Tennis and we'll catch you in the next one.